good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Mario De Felice. I work at Jaguar Land Rover. Uh, what we're going to talk about is um, is literally just you know what is the point of view that that we've that uh, a car manufacturer you know, really has on on open source software. So hopefully there is a little bit of a of an insight here. Uh, with you know the the previous presentations were were very interesting and um, and I'm, I'm actually trying to uh, to use, uh, I will try to use some of that context within this presentation as well, just to put all those in context as well. A um, little bit about me. Um, I'm a software architecture manager, and I've been doing this at JLR for six years, uh, mainly working on infotainment systems uh, and, and domain controller in general, um, uh, obviously with, with data analytics and, and audio domains uh, as part of my job. Uh, uh, one of one of our latest products is the uh, the um, in control PV Pro, uh, which is go which is going on our uh, Defender vehicle. Uh, my in my past, I have worked with with many companies, uh, collaborations with many companies. Um, with Google, I've worked with UCLA uh, during my PhD, and and with some with some other car manufacturers um, for. Uh, in, for projects related to uh, the Claradoc networks, where vehicle talk uh, one to the other, and and, and that at that stage it was also open source, so it could be um, fun line as well. Um, so what I'd like to go through with you tonight is simply the you know what is the importance and what actually are the challenges of open sourcing automotive. Uh, I will talk about. A little bit about the Geneva lines because you cannot have a presentation about you know, open source uh, in automotive without quoting this. And I know we've got actually done afterwards. So we're going to talk about another uh, another similar project, AGL, and um, um, we're going to give you a view on open source sources and and the challenges, and uh, and and a view on what it means actually staying close to the main line for 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 a car manufacturer. Uh, first of all, um, why open source in automotive? Um, historically, uh, you know, the automotive industry has been uh, a bit behind on this front, and, and even just uh, a bit against uh, everything that is sort of open and, and shared. Because um, you know, Niels was uh, was talking about this in his presentation, you know, there, there are certain views that, you know, make it challenging. Uh, it, it, some people even see it as, you know, that sort of, um, there is sometimes there is even like a fear that it might not be secure because it's out there so everyone can see it, you know, as opposed to it's out there so everyone can see it and, you know, can tell you if it's wrong. Um, and, um, and you know, in, in some cases that culture is present in certain environments, obviously. Um, and and the other point is that a car maker is often you know just an integrator of several ECUs, so several modules, right? And uh, and and effectively, um, you know, sometimes they don't even have exact visibility or knowledge of what's inside the boxes that they are integrating. Um, so, so effectively telling them that you've got something that is open source and it's not the product that I'm buying from you, right? It, you know, it might upset them. This is changing, however, thank God it is. Um, it is changing and, you know, the culture is shifting against this, um, uh, against this sort of thoughts. Um, but let's answer the question of why open source. You know, obviously car manufacturers, know how to do very well vehicles. So they, they know how to integrate a lot of issues together, uh, you know, sometimes 50 plus issues together. And, um, and, and you know, that's, that's the main skill that we've got. Uh, but, you know, do, do we know how to make, you know, an operating system? Do we know how to write USB drivers Do well, it's not the core business, so it, we shouldn't really reinvent the wheel. And 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 effectively, that's where effectively the you know the open source community is very powerful because um, and we will talk a little bit around that. Uh, and this is this is exactly the point. So 
you can't do everything by yourself. You could if you had enough people and money, but you can't really do everything by yourself. So you tend to rely, especially on especially on the lower layers of, of your stack, on, on things that are open source. And even if the software is delivered by someone else, uh, a tier one into, into the company, most likely they, they, they have done that as well. And yeah, just to, to put it in context of what that means, I try to give like a, a you know, view of a typical project in, uh, in automotive, but I'm sure that that is, you know, fairly translatable to, to other areas as well. Um, uh, the, the, the three main types of software that compose it, which is, you know, pretty much pretty generic sort of definitions of that are obviously the proprietary bespoke aspect of the project, which is obviously the where where the value is, and and that's where the car manufacturers really are interested in in uh, you know putting the you know putting the resources really. Um, some commercial off the shelf um, software and and a lot of open source software, a lot of it, and you know this puts it into context and um, where. You know, normally about two thirds of a project is is just open source, and you can you know you can go and ask around if that sort of statistic stands. Sometimes they tell you that the answer is no. Well, most likely you know most likely they don't know, or you know, or they effectively are trying to hide it. But you know, most of it is is mostly open source, and um, and effectively. The challenge that um, that we've got uh, is, is on licenses, obviously, because you know automotive car manufacturers are very attached to to their value and and to the stuff that they they do. So obviously, licenses come into play um, quite a lot. And um, the obviously there is there is uh, almost like you know a, a very um, careful scan of, of the licenses that are used in software. Obviously, GPL v3, you know, it, it cannot possibly be used. Um, but you know, there is a very care, there is a lot of attention on which licenses you can you can use, um, and it's very common of very restrictive policies. Even in you know, obviously not not in my company, even in other companies that, that where they publicly effectively state which which licenses they use. Interestingly enough, you know, you in in uh, when the product is op is based on open source software, you should be able to see obviously which which uh, you know all this data from the infotainment system itself. Um, now, another aspect that you know is really important in automotive. I mean, it, it's important everywhere, but in automotive, this you know becomes really really key. When you choose the project that you're going to use in terms of, for example, you know, when you're going to choose a, like a Linux distribution or, you know, a, a particular repository online, then effectively that that is a key decision because the lifespan of a vehicle uh, is very, very long. Uh, we're talking you need to budget for 20 years effectively. Right. So uh, given that. You you know th there might be some very good software uh, you know open source and available that you could use the, the you know the, the famous guy in the garage uh, you know you could use that software but uh, but effectively you need to to make sure that the repository you're actually picking is, is something that is backed and you know it, it's going to be supported over time for a lot of time. Uh, obviously, you're going to contribute that, you know, that is sort of, uh, you know, uh, that is for sure, but but you need to make sure that you're not the only contributor, that there is someone else and it's not just the guy in the garage, uh, you know, contributed to that repository because otherwise, you know, all the security patches, all the updates, you're not going to be able to, to, to do them. And while in the past, this could be, you know, acceptable, uh, you know, so we saw in the previous presentation a case of a, was it like a 2008 message or something? You know, in, in that sort of scenario, that is sort of acceptable that, you know, you do you don't keep updating your unit 
but nowadays it's it's pretty much impossible software over the air is reality and you know every ecu is getting updated very very frequently um especially because of all the connected feature so don't pick the guy you know don't pick the guy in the garage that's the message effectively even if he ends up being you know a good guy in the garage um so as i said i cannot really avoid you know mentioning geneva in this context because uh, you know it's been it, it's been and it is a very important um effective organization um that, that promotes uh uh, Linux in the in the especially for the infotainment system. Uh, J. Large Grand Rover was uh, was part of this uh, of this organization as well. Our previous system, uh, Intro Touch Pro, uh, is actually Linux based and you know it's well known um, and and, um, and and effectively we 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 had a, a very good collaboration with Geneva as well. And what Geneva does is not only, uh, you know, trying to uh, standardize and, and offer a standard platform for everyone, but you know, it also keeps you know keeps evolving that, um, and you know, it even uh, provides today support for hypervisor, which is you know uh, a, a very interesting, uh, very interesting development in the area, um, and and really. Um, these sort of organizations they do represent the, the the shift the cultural shift that is happening in in automotive it cannot happen quickly enough but you know they do represent that and uh, and it's sort of a light of hope uh, that you know we're, we're moving towards the right direction um and any it, and it gives you exactly what i was talking about before it gives you that standardization and that support at, at the lower layers of the system where you actually maybe the car manufacturer hasn't got all the expertise but you know if if everyone works together you know you can get to you you know can get there effectively and you see it's it, you know it's well supported as i said we're part of it as well um, um and um and effectively that that is you know, a very important message. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is um, is effectively, you know, the, the type of projects that are on there, um, um, stuff like DST that, you know, you can use for uh, um, for diagnostics, log and trace, uh, you know, there, there, there is a lot of good stuff over there. Um, and, but, the, but obviously the thing that, that also is worth noting is that, you know, obviously maintenance is always an issue so for example i don't know the persistent management needs a new maintainer right so if you've got that in production it might be you know it, it, it's not great so so it, there is always that danger so you sort of need to be ready to like step in uh and, and you know and do a little bit more work but you know that's definitely uh the the, the you know the direction to go to um very quickly i promised i i will be uh you know as quickly i will do this presentation as quickly as possible um and a little bit of uh effectively review on oss because that's where i think the open source is really really uh, evolving within automotive um uh, no one is ever gonna put like a, an hmi of a, a land rover four by four feature uh, or the framework of that as open source online, but but definitely at the lower layers, this is you know, it's very much um, happening. Um, there is a lot of communalization that is going on. Um, and until a few years ago, and you know, arguably even till today, there is a sort of a duality between OSs in automotive, um, where you've got Linux, which is obviously open source you've got a lot of distros and a lot of uh people that can support you with that and you've got qnx is obviously a private um closed source company that provides um you know a very robust 
uh, especially for automotive, very robust um, OS and robustness is obviously key in in the in the world of automotive. Um, Linux, I must say, has a considerable tech rate in, in in this industry. You know, it's it's obviously increased over time, um, um, and and but there is to say that. Uh, being a um, you know a, a, an open platform and you know something that keeps evolving, maintaining it can be expensive, uh, especially if if you know you you working on it with your own resources or you pick the wrong project where there isn't a maintainer anymore and stuff like that. Uh, and and remember, you still want your security patches. You know, if something goes wrong. Uh, you do need to patch immediately your system as soon as possible. So, so that is very much, uh, very much important. Um, there is uh, very good support for drivers, though. Uh, you know, if you work in QNX, you know, normally, uh, you know, in my experience, if if you work with QNX, the drivers come from Linux and they're ported in Q, into QNX most of the times. Um, because I mean, normally, and you know, that it's not obviously hundred percent, but normally they're 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 already available for Linux, and you know, they they will be then converted into ported into QNX. And um, and there is a you know a great availability of people that you can get out there to work on on uh, on a Linux system simply because you know it's a it's a system that is not only there for automotive, but it's a system that you know supports other platforms like laptops and you know everything else. So it, you can find a lot more uh, skilled resources to help you if something goes wrong down in the down in that layer. The probably the the biggest rival in the last few years is is Android, where where effectively. There is a quite, quite a almost like a, a an increasing love for Android going forward. You you can see Polestar, for example, the the like the sports brand of Volvo has got one of these uh, an Android system, um, and um, and that's really to try and exploit familiarity with with the that the user has with with his phone. So when when you've got an Android phone, you step into your car, you sort of see the same experience. You don't need to sort of learn that system. Sometimes you know, entertainment systems, you know, they're not you know they can be complex, but uh, but the the thing is that even if they're not complex, you sort of need to familiarize with how they work. Um, the other important point that Android offers is the availability of applications in market. Automotive has a big issue. It sells world, worldwide, or at least big car manufacturers do. So they need, you know, what we have here might not be, uh, you know, needed in China, for example. In China, they might have different applications that they're looking for, that when you uh, effectively create a system, in the UK, you, you don't even think about those, like the, you know, the Baidu, the WeChat, uh, those, the, those applications are supposed to be market. And if you're stuck, uh, you know, if you, if you are with Android, those applications obviously come from the store and, and you can deploy them very quickly without worrying too much about that. So every specific market, I don't know, Korea has got Kakao Talk or whatever. You can deploy those applications in the market uh, a little bit easily, you know, easier with respect to other systems. Definitely more easily with respect to closed source operating systems. I can assure you that. Uh, so that is super important. Uh, and you know, like Linux, obviously, like you know, it's. Unix system in general, anyway. So with support for drivers and lots of people that can help you with with the system itself. Uh, also, you know, in in the market in general, we see this this shift for for the you know pros in the in the market mainly. Uh, there is, you know, the, I would say maybe the negatives of it are that you need to adhere to certain guidelines that you get given. 
to be able to commercialize your system and to be able to to use it effectively on, on a vehicle um they they vary uh, according to the situation but you sort of bound to them and um and, and effectively another thing to to look at is that um there the suppliers obviously that provide software you know the big names in the software industry they will they most likely have a branch of the Android main operating system, which is personalized. Obviously, you see that, I don't know, if you pick a Samsung phone, it will have its own version of Android. So this obviously happens in, in automotive as well. Um, so there are pros and cons against on that. Um, the... The other thing I was going to say is that there is a, 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 an alliance here as well. There's the Open Automotive Alliance that supports Android, um, which which JLR is part of, uh, which essentially promotes the 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 effectively the introduction of the Android system in cars. So I mean the, these. These um, sort of initiatives are always uh, very encouraging. It looks like we're moving in the right direction. Um, very quickly, uh, and this is the last part of the talk, is I want to talk about what the the, the branching strategy uh, is historically like, and you know, so what, what we, where we go in, um, where, what, what we actually moving towards. So. In the past, effectively, in automotive, uh, in my experience with, also with other, you know, especially with other car, car manufacturers, um, there is there is an approach to branching which is peculiar in the sense that um, you 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 often, especially, you know, I must stress that in the past, people would branch off, uh, do their development. And, and then effectively create a branch that will live forever. And we, you know, remember what I said before, 20 years, right? So you've got branch for 20 years that you need to maintain. You don't rebase, you don't do anything, just, you know, that's your branch, it's gonna live. And if you have other products, then they're separate branches with separate development, several releases as well. So that that sort of you know and you know in the industry of software providers you know they are learning the lesson so this is going away towards a more traditional approach but uh but obviously this thing would make fixes extremely expensive so if there was a bug or a security patch to be applied across the patch across the product these will turn out to be extremely expensive um and as you can imagine, because you actually need people to work on like a lot of branches and do the same, you know, do the same thing all over again. And, and there wasn't really, a, I've called the main line here, but you know, the concept of main line was very, uh, I don't know, non-existent really. So, but over time, even in the automotive industry, uh, the suppliers, the tier ones are actually, you know, have actually moved towards a, you know, a more normal approach uh, where effectively they keep a main line, they might branch off for a particular car manufacturer. So I don't know, the, we talked about, you know, the Samsungs, the, the LGs, they might branch off, right, and do their own branch. But uh, the key thing is that obviously, you know, automotive resilience of the software is key. So you, you would still branch off again to do the release, harden it and release it. But the concept of you know that line living forever is no longer there. So if there is a problem on a particular you know particular car, you you know you don't look at this branch anymore. You've got something else that you can apply later on in the in the in the main line. So if there is a security patch on Android, I'm not gonna go here and fix it, obviously. So this is coming in also in the in the automotive industry um, um, it, it's you know it's now there but you will be surprised there are companies out there that um, effectively the whole the whole reason of existence is go and help 
the automotive industry with situations like the one we saw before. So it's still not gone away completely. And um, obviously robustness is key. So, you know, you do need to spend some time here hardening the software, obviously. Um, the example that I think of is me tinkering with, with my infotainment system and breaking it before, uh, you know, before the shopping with the wife. And I can assure you that that is not something that <laughs> you want to see, especially not my wife. You, you, you really don't want to hear the comments. Um, uh, so effectively, um, so automotive is learning the importance of staying close to the main line, and especially the tier ones are learning that lesson. Um, so effectively, the, the attention of the car manufacturers when they select tier ones, because as we said before, in many cases, car manufacturers don't do the software themselves. They, they might do, there are cases where they do. There is a lot of software that we do at JLR, for example. Uh, we've got a center in Ireland uh, and in Portland and in Manchester as well, where we, we we only do software development. But, you know, remember that there is a lot of issues that you know, are just bought in normally. But you would look at the suppliers that are giving you those issues to make sure, you know, to, to review their plan, the branching strategy, uh, the frequency of updates they can support you with, um, you know, what's what's the strategy with their and the lifetime of their uh, branch, um, and and obviously a type of licenses. We talked about that before, uh, and and obviously you would have to make sure that. Whatever you do, since you're paying them, you, know, you need to make sure that they can maintain whatever they're doing for 20 plus years. And it's you know it's not just words, but you know it makes sense what they're saying. So uh, going to conclude now, effectively just a summary of what we talked about. Um, there is a, a lot of force in vehicles, um, even if you're not, you know, even if you don't get told about that. Um, car manufacturers have become a lot more aware of, of the, the positives of uh, open source. Um, maintainability over a long product lifespan is still a problem and a concern, and so are the license types, which obviously you need to be aware of. Uh, but the, the, there are alliances now that were born and, uh, and they're promoting the use of Fossil Automotive, which is obviously very welcome. And um, uh, and obviously the, <clears throat> the 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 now also the attention to the branching strategy is a lot, you know, is there now in the in, in the automotive space, which is something that you know is is coming in in, in, in the normal software world is you know uh, well known and it's also coming in this environment very quickly. So that is all I've got for uh, tonight. Are there any questions? Well, thank you very much for the talk. There are a couple of questions. So the first question by Jeremy was um, that it's not obvious to him that you can't use GPL3 as a license. I think there is still, yeah, I think there is still that level of uh, sometimes, I don't want to say fear because, you know, it's not fear, uh, but extreme caution, but yeah borderline fear but extreme caution you know to make sure you know the certain licenses are not used and this is again the this is changing as the culture is evolving mm -hmm. uh this is changing over time so stay tuned effectively okay so the next question by then um it's it does seem that many oems are now announcing that they are building their own operating system platform using Linux and not depending on Android due to the business issues in dealing with Google. What are your thoughts on this? Well, as I said, uh, you know, Google is demanding. You know, it's it's a big partner. It's a big company that has got an image that it needs to maintain. So it, it's, you know, it's sometimes you need to compromise on what you want to do, for example, uh, if you want to uh, have Android on your vehicle. And that's why it's not really like 100% out there. 
it, you know, it, it's true, it's free, you can use it, but you need to depend on, you know, you, you need to listen to them. You cannot do exactly everything you want. So I would say, I would say that, you know, is is you know, you can't deny that. Hey, Daniel asks, do you find that Android could make it more secure due to the ability of sandboxing and isolation of apps and resources? Well, um, I think security is always welcome, and you know, in, in automotive especially, it is uh, a key aspect which is uh, you know, which you need to pay um, you need to pay a lot of attention to. Um, I think the answer is is yes. There are, I mean, but you know, there are other um, ways you can achieve that. But you know, certainly, uh, you know, Android gives you a straight out of the box sort of. Uh, Uh, policy for that, but you know you can make it. You can you can secure a Linux system as well. Um, no issue. I mean there are issues, but you can secure a Linux a standard Linux uh, as well.